Hello everyone and welcome to the 100th video of Mr. Yankee G. Now, today we have number 9474, the largest Lord of the Rings set to date. The Battle of Helm's Deep for 1,368 pieces, ages 10 to 14. Now, there will be a giveaway of this set when I reach. I'll tell you at the end of the video. Now, First, this is an incredible set. It is my second Lord of the Rings set. The only other one I have is Attack at Weathertop, but I will be getting all the new ones, all of the, all four of the new summer 2013 ones, all but the Orc Forge, which is really not a very good set, if you ask me, of the 2012 sets, and most of the Hobbit sets. So... I will be re reviewing all those along with New City, Star Wars, Coast Guard, and, you know, Coast Guard City. Lord of the... Uh, I said Lord of the Rings. Castle, you know, Lone Ranger, all the new themes. I'll be reviewing a lot of the sets. I've already got, I know, a lot of... I have all three Iron Man 3 sets waiting for you to be reviewed. But I wanted a big one for the 100th video and for the giveaway. So... The rules of the giveaway will be at the in the end, but for now, let's get on to the minifigures. The best things about this Lego set is the minifigures. Two of the three of the minifigures are exclusive, and yeah, that's just pretty awesome. Now, Aragorn and Gimli at the time this set was made were only available in one other set. Now they are available in two others uh, two new sets. Well, Gimli is available in the pirate ship, and Aragorn also in the pirate ship, the same tour, so, but in his king outfit in the Battle of the Black Gate. But that's not important. For now, right now, all we're talking about is Aragorn. He is great. I love the new steel swords they're using um, in Lord of the Rings and some of the new castle sets. And it's really just a much a step up from the older swords. It looks much more like a real sword. And you can see it has the numbers there, but it just looks very nice. Looks custom, almost. It looks like something you might get from Brick Forge, Brick Forge or Brick Arms, or some custom site like that. Now, he has some really nice light printing down there. And he also has some great torso printing with his necklace. And he's got great face printing. He's got just a tad of back printing, not much. You can barely even see it. Uh, you guys can see it somewhere. Just a few lines. But, <sighs> this is another thing I love about these Lord of the Rings sets. Almost every minifigure comes with a double-sided face. Every single, single figure in this set comes with a double-sided face. In the back, he's a little bit more angry, but still awesome. Next is Gimli, and as I already said, at the time he was exclusive to only two sets, and now he's exclusive to only three. He is a great minifigure and comes with two axes, one of which is much bigger than the other. Now, without his printing, or without the, his weapons, his helmet looks absolutely great with some incredible printing all around. And one complaint I have is the beard isn't red. It's a lightish brown, but still, the beard is incredible with the braids and everything else about it. Same thing on the back. It goes all the way around. And Gimli, without any beard, he almost looks like a little boy, which it's a little weird. But um, his printing, just to get onto that, is incredible. It really looks as if he's some, like a noble person in a way. Um, the helmet looks too big without the beard. So, Gimli, word of advice, don't go clean shaven. And he even has a double-sided head. Which is very nice. And without the helmet, his front-sided head. He almost looks a little tired. Next to minifigure is Halder and... He is our first exclusive minifigure and very possibly one of the best minifigures of all time. 
He has the newly molded elf ears, which look fantastic. And his yellow hair definitely represents the elves in a great way. He also comes with the long bow, which is much longer than the normal bow you get in Castle and other sets. And I am so glad that they made a new mold for that. He next, next, he has some great printing and some gold arms, which you don't get too often. And he looks very nice with his printing. His face looks nice. And the printing is absolutely magnificent. The front printing is just a piece of amazingness. It almost looks as if it's real or alive. It, the waves of the clothing looks great. And I know it's only plastic, but it looks incredible. He also features a great double-sided head, which with most of these minifigures, they have their calm, cool face, and they, then they've got their pissed off, ready for battle face. And I really like this. He is one of my, he is my favorite figure in this set, and definitely one of my favorite of all time. They could easily put this minifigure in a collectible series tent, or a collectible series, and I would just search for this figure because he is incredible, and I really love it. Only thing I think they're missing is a quiver. Which, I don't know how they would do it, but it would be great. And I think for the next elf, they show that a quiver. Heldmer also features some incredible back printing, which really makes this minifigure become even more collectible and more amazing. So overall, this is my favorite minifigure of the set. Next is maybe what you might think the best minifigure. This is the second exclusive minifigure, and in my opinion, the second best. This is King Theodon. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He is not a, exactly a, not exactly the mini, I don't really know the, I can't really know, the, unless they're a main character in the Lord of the Rings, I cannot, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing their names right. He does come with the new horse, which can retract its legs, which I will show you close up, which is very nice. It gives much more playability. He can also move his head up and down, like so. And I also like that the horse looks much more real. It doesn't look like a block. So the horse is very nice. One complaint I have, however, is on the other side, this leg is always up. That is supposed to give the appearance that it's walking. However, on solid ground, it might fall over unless you balance it very carefully. However, on studs, that will never be a problem. So, the new horse is great to add to your minifigure collection, and it is about time that they update that. The King Theodon himself. This minifigure is just packed with detail from top to bottom, leg printing, armor printing, shield printing, double-sided head. It is just a great minifigure. He comes with the same sword as Aragon, which, like I already said, is very nice. He comes with the same shield as Captain America, except with the same, with different back, with different printing. It's just the same mold. He also has the same shield as Emor, I believe is how you say it, and the Yurkaya Army, which is the next set I'll be buying from the Lord of the Rings sets. From the 2012 sets. I've already got two of the 2013 sets, which is the um, Black Eight and Council of Elderon. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get the smallest set, mostly because I might just get the big one, so I won't need that one. But... <laughs> Depends, will I be wanting the tower or will I be wanting the Ewok village? Post in the comments, which would you rather see me review? The Tower of Orthodox or Ewok village? They're both similar prices, $200, $200 and 220 to 250 So, anyways, back to the minifigure. Like I already said, he comes with some great printing. Um, the shield is great, but I feel as if he's almost a little... I don't know how to put this. The shield seems a little too small. Now, just like in Captain America, the shield seems too small. I think a bigger shield, but not too much bigger, just a tad bigger, just a little bit more around the edges, would be great. Now, on the back, eh, let go. Eh. The shield is red, which is very nice. I like that it isn't all green. It looks, makes it look more real. Only thing that would make it better is if they made the handle brown, so it's like a strap. He also comes with a nice sword, like I already said. Now onto the actual minifigure himself. The helmet, 
and armor printing is some of the best printing I've ever seen in my life. Just like Heldmer, I hope I said that right, it is a very, very good looking minifigure. Clean, but amazing. The actual minifigure, <laughs> kind of fuzzy there. The actual minifigure is just downright outstanding. There is no back armor printing, but I just want to talk about the helmet for a second. The helmet is a new mold. It's curved, printed, and almost looks like a Roman helmet, but not, not the same thing. It looks very smooth, and I love the gold and the way that it just kind of brings it, ah, brings them out. His armor printing has almost a, a flower on it, and no back printing. Take off King Theodon's armor and helmet, you'll find that he has an incredible shirt and uh, garments underneath. Now, his, obviously his leg armor can't come off because that's just the figure and basis, but he does have a bit of a belt down there, which I love. Now, this minifigure does, again, come with a great back face, but I don't really like the back face. It looks more like he's constipated, so I don't know. Do you guys agree? But I will say, this figure really took on, or LEGO really took on a great job with these figures, and this figure is incredible. He has incredible printing, and really just a great set to see. I will say that his torso almost looks like a noble's, like in you know, ancient times, so I wish they gave him a hairpiece too, and then you could have him in mocks and stuff. Next, we have our Yurkaya. These are the bad guys in Lord of the Rings. And this is an exclusive minifigure, and I'm not exactly sure what his name is, but in the movie, they're kind of Japanese kamikaze. They're suicide bombers. They wear no armor, and basically, they just run full speed into, uh, uh, into a wall. And they carry these bombs, and they carry torches, and have great and crazy painting, and everyone cheers for them, and then they blow up the wall and kill themselves. What a great job. That's what I be when I, what I want to be when I grow up. That's probably what they tell your kids. Son, when you're older, you can be a kamikaze. <gasps> really? Just like we tell our kids, maybe one day you'll be president, son. This is how they what they tell their kids. Anyways, he's kind of basic, but being that he's an exclusive minifigure and a great idol, he looks great. The painting on his face is really brings it out and he has I'm going to say a four-pack, I don't really know. Then, on the back, he has more back printing, and his... He, this is the only minifigure that doesn't have a double-sided head, but he has back printing on the head, so I would still count that as double-sided head. Next off, we get three Yurkaya, which you also get in Yurkaya Army. Now, all of these figures have the same exact printing, same exact head, and the same shields, same swords, same helmets. And the same armor for these two. So, I'm just going to show you one, and then you can kind of base off of the others. This one comes with a shield and a axe, so nothing too special with him. This one comes with only one sword, but they give you an extra sword, so I gave him a second. And then, our model, Rukaya, is got a great new molded shield. And a new Yurkaya sword. And the helmet looks really great. Underneath, that is his upset face. And then the back, you have his even more upset face. Now they all have the same face as this one. And uh, the same armor printing on the Yurkaya is nice, but I just don't really like it. I like the, um, the normal ones more, not the, like, the genetically modified Yurkaya, the, uh, just the orcs. The orcs are much nicer, I like them more. And back printing is very simple. Center front printing. So I would like to mention that you do get an orange brick separator with the Technic pin, which works very nicely when trying to get you do this, you push it out, you can get your pin. Works very nicely when you have a stuck piece. The one thing that you get in Helm's Deep that isn't actual, actually Helm's Deep, besides the minifigures, is the Siege Ladder. Now, in the movies, the Yurkaya would push these up 
latch them on, and then they would climb them up. Archers would try to shoot them down, and it looks very nice. It suits the purpose. Love the top, the blades on top, and the way they use the ladders. You can easily, in the instructions, find, get the pieces from Prick and Brick, and make four or five more of these to make it look more like the movie. Speaking about instruction manuals, you get four instruction manuals. The first one builds the beginning of the front part. The next finishes that off. It's the same exact front. The third builds the small part of the wall and the tower. And the fourth is the cube, which I lost the instruction booklet. Sorry. Now for the actual set. I just want to first give you an overview of the entire set. It is big. To start off, I am going to start off here at the wall, or at the bridge. Now this bridge is pretty long, as you can see it's starting to go off my blue poster board. But one problem I have is, why Lego did you make this play feature, if you can even consider it that? You open this up and you make the skeleton. Because of that, now there's a crack there and it doesn't look solid. That is one of the cons of this set. Here you can see that Aragon is fighting off some Yurkaya, and this is our second called a first one play feature. In the movie, Aragon and Gimli sneak out this back door, as you can see here, which is very nice. Which opens to go into the main part of the castle. Of course, you'd have to crouch to get in, but, well, at least Aragon would. Now, the play feature is, in the movie... Phone is ringing. Stop. There's an animal in trouble. Sorry. In the movie, they heroes want to go and fight these Yukaya, which are trying to break through the door. Now, in the movie, he is a short little dwarf and cannot make the large jump. And in the actual movie, as I keep saying, there is a large. This is a kind of a cliff. It's very high up. It's probably a 30 feet foot drop. Aragon, being a big, strong human, decides to throw him over, which is our first play feature. Now, I guess the play feature is, flick this, and you try to hit the Yurkaya. So, here it goes. You can see, it doesn't work too good when they're on studs, but it will get him over. Now, when you don't have the Yurkaya there, it works much better. Oh, it keeps playing the head today. It doesn't seem like it wants to work, probably because of the big axes. But, you get the general idea, and if then you can have Aragon jump over too. Now, now, onto the actual front of the castle. You can see these doors are very large. I like the doors, and they look very good to suit their purpose. However, one complaint I have is, there is no way to barricade the doors. Ah! But really, all you have to do is take flat... One by two, piece, go in there, piece it up, and then even my finger, it takes a while for it to break. Let's see, so that's not a problem at all. So all you need is a little piece. Now, the doors open very nicely, and looking in, you can see the keep. The key makes it seem as if the castle is endless and large. Larger than it actually is. Because of the key. Ah! It's squeaky. Look at the light in there. I need better lighting for sure. Because of the keep, you can actually see and it looks as if the castle goes on for much longer. Higher up now, you can see that there are these that close, open and close. These are for your archers to shoot down but they can't shoot back up and hit them. Also, Lego, instead of giving you another minifigure for an archer, decided to give you some rocks. So, Heldmer can throw rocks down at the enemy. Also, we get a small catapult to throw the rocks over, which I'm sure all of you know how to do that, so we don't have to waste time going to retrieve that. We also get a Rohan flat. Ah, go on. 
We also get a Rohan flag, which the gold and green looks very nice. And we get a torch. Really like how the just the front of the building seems so big and powerful. You know why? Instead of making it an even number, Lego made this a seven studs wide building, so on either part. And the middle is eight studs. This looks very nice, and I love the way the curvature goes around very nicely there till the end of the building. Now, as I said before, there's a door here that you can open to get inside. The Battle of Helm's Deep also has a modular mindset, so you can pull certain parts off. Now, I believe it pulls off here, pulls off here, pulls off here, and this is empty on its own. Moving on, you can see the siege tower is here, and it easily just hooks on to the parts between. Now, moving on to our next play feature in a moment, this part right here, I know I'm causing a shadow, looks very nice with the curvature. And it just looks nice all around, this piece. I'm also missing a piece here. It should have been a 1x2 stud like that. I did not get that. So, not the biggest deal in the world. This play feature is supposed to be the wall blowing up. So your kamikaze Yurikaya runs up and he drops the bomb here on the river pieces, of which look very nice. Now, when he drops the bomb, the way it works is back behind here, there is a lever. So when you pull that lever, push it down, it explodes. It works very nicely, I realized, if you do it the opposite direction that you pulled it. This will pull that up, but it's not that much better, and it makes this part, which is so much more heavier, explode along with it. Up high here you can see that we have this tower which overall looks very nice and of course big. Now I know LEGO tried to make this set the best of their ability but this is one again once against once again another con. This tower should be at least this high just like the wall over here which should go stretch all the way out here. So, ask me, just make it bigger yourself. Go to pick a break and get some pieces. Now, I don't know why you can lift these up. Maybe so you can look at the, look at the stickers, which are some of the... These are the only stickers included on the set, basically. On either side. Well, no, there's a... My bad. There's also some in there. But, really, not too many stickers included in Helm's Deep. Now here along the back, you can see, uh, there is ladders going all the way up, and there is a horn that Gimli, or someone else, is supposed to blow to warn the other people, or to give battle orders. Down there you can also see there's another door, in case they need to escape. That is it for the main part of Battle of Helm's Deep. Now onto the keep. The actual keep is a very quick build and only requires around 50 pages of building. These pieces really make up a large amount of the building time. Up here you can see there's more walls. And all along the side you have the greenness of Helm's Deep. And this lifts up so that you can connect to the other part if archers or soldiers need to run along. So also another Rohan flag. I wish they included one more Rohan, hot f Rohan flag here so it didn't look like they were all based in the center. Now, this is really the only playability in the inside of the Battle of Helm's Deep. But if you watch the movie, the Battle of Helm's Deep does not actually have that much inside the wall besides where they keep all the humans. Like, like not the soldiers, like the, the children and women so they don't die. Anyways, you can see there's two you can see there's two weapon racks here. They can fit four weapons each. You get two extra spears and two extra swords. Lego, also being Lego, needs to give a rack 
which is dumb because Rohans are very clean. You then get some nice dishware and a tur turkey leg, which you guys don't need to see. That's somewhere. That's the blender. Yep. But you can see, it's so always nice to get some cups. I do wish they would make put this in another color. Maybe just gray, so it looks like a normal dish, like you're not filling us. Here is the one of the other stickers, which is just put on the back of the chair. The chair is actually very nice. You can even fit a, a cape back there too, which is nice. Usually, capes will get destroyed. That's it. And our last detail is the Rohan flag, which looks very nice. Just like in the Battle of Hogwarts, the same or Hogwarts, the same piece, and it looks much like Slytherin's flag. Okay, we're back. And do I think you should get this Lego set? Here is my opinion. If you like Lord of the Rings or Castles or just great Lego sets, yes, you should spend $130 on this Lego set. It may seem like a lot of money, and it is, but for what you get, it is worth it. I do think you should also get a Yurkaya army to make the wall longer over here. Now, is the set worth for little kids from 5 to 10, or really 0 to 10, but I don't see any 5-year-olds building this, do I? From 5 to 10, young kids, I don't think so. I'm going to give this set... A five. If they really want some Lord of the Rings sets, get them your Kaya army. Still got the awesome figures. They still get that little bit of a castle. Or you can get them the kingdom set or the castle sets. I'm sorry, and they'll be just as happy. Now, older kids, eleven to sixteen. Yes, 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 yes. Like, oh, I didn't give the rating to the younger kids. Younger kids are gonna be a five. It's a great set, but not for them. Older kids, yes, 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 and. Infinity, 9.5 out of 10. I only have four cons, and I'm going to get to those in a second. Now, adults, 17 plus. Is this set really worth it for you? Well, if you're a collector of Lord of the Rings or Castle, yes. I do think so. However, you might not want the play features, but it's still. It's one of the most iconic scenes in the Lord of the Rings trilogies, so I'm going to still give it an 8.5 for adults. Now, like I already said, there's four cons in that set, and that is, they only give you eight minifigures. The minifigures are some, probably the best set in the set I've ever seen. But if I'm spending $130, I want more than eight minifigures. Give me two more, and here's what I'm asking for. A Rohan Archer, just like in your Kaya Army, and a Rohan, like, a uh, Rohan Cavalry guy. Now, you do get Emor in the other one, but he's like... High up. He's not just a normal guy. So give us a normal guy. And then you'd have another exclusive figure. That'd only be ten figures. And yeah, I'd pay five, ten dollars more for those two figures. Now, the next cons are the wall isn't big enough. And of course I know, yeah, they made the other one. But just make it a little longer. Third. Yes, that is not long enough, tall enough. But again, it's not really a con. Neither is the wall. It's just Lego. They have. They can't fit all. If you want a bigger tower, build it yourself. Just buy the pieces off and pick a brick. And then just every time they tell you to do a crease, use two, and you'll get that tall. Now, last con is they didn't give you too many flags. They only gave you two flags, and this is a really one of the only cons. Just give us one more flag here, and I'd be happy. But again, that's four pieces. Very easy to come by. So, yes. Now, the moment I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for, giveaway details. Here's how it's going to work. When I reach 1,000 subscribers or a million views, I will give away this set. Now, here are the rules. You have to be a subscriber. You have to comment in at least three of my last five videos. So, any of my latest five videos you have to comment on. And you have to like my latest five videos. Now. There will also be a second and third place winner. Second place will win Attack on Weathertop, and third place will win a $30 Lego Lord of the Rings set of their choice. Yurkaya Army, Council of Eldoran, or whatever the $30 
Hobbit set is. Also, I might decide to do a fourth place where you can win any of the $10 Lord of the Rings sets. Gandalf Arrives, uh, the Sauron one where they fight, or uh, Gollum one. Anyways, this is Mr. NKG. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe if you want to win. And I'll talk to you guys later. Our next re review will be Iron Man Malibu Mansion. And remember to check out MrNKGStudios.com and go to my gaming site at MrNKGGaming.com.